Assalamu alaikum. What do we mean when we say he or she has a noble character? Well, Allah tells us clearly. And he also has told us that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the most noble of a character of anyone that ever lived on this earth. Although we do say the unity of the message of all prophets is one, Prophet Muhammad is outstanding in that he is a, an example for us. He was living, but he still is a living example for us because we have the Hadith collections wherein we know exactly what he did and said, when, where, why, and how. So this lesson is called Noble Character in Arabic, Husn al-Khuluq. Khuluq. Allah is the Khuluq. He creates. The khuluk is our creation, who we are. Once you have repented, our previous lessons about repentance, it is very important that you realize and try to inculcate a good Islamic character. Your life should be controlled and you should influence others by this practice. Quranic verses basically sum up the essence of the believer's behavior with all he comes in contact with. This is very important. Muslims are not chameleons. They don't change with time and place. They don't seek favors from anyone but Allah. So their character is steadfast. Allah tells us in the Quran, Bismillah, Show forbearance and join what is good and turn away from the foolish. How succinct. This is in Surah Al-Araf, verse 199. When this verse was revealed, the Prophet Muhammad asked the angel Gabriel in English, Jibril in Arabic, what it meant. And Jibril answered, I don't know. I'll ask Allah. When he returned, he explained, Allah orders that you go to the one who cuts you off. You give to the one who doesn't give to you. And you forgive who oppresses you. <laughs> Is that what we hear on CNN? <laughs> Is that what? <laughs> Allahu Akbar, it's just um, sometimes I I'm, at, I'm at a loss for words of what they tried to do and how the potential damage it seemed to have had occurred and borne fruit but recently we're realizing their deeds were in vain because Islam is now taking over uh, many people's hearts and minds and it will only increase to do so the more we give you the information. Hopefully I can be a part of giving you a lot of information that they tried to hide. Who are they? Those who were touched by Satan. You see, humans are so weak that they can easily be led astray by the evil whisperer. But you know, Prophet Muhammad wasn't weak. Neither were any of the prophets, by the way. That's another thing. Some have lied about prophets and said really disgusting things about them, but not us. The Muslims don't say that. That's um, versions of the other scriptures that have been distorted. Yes. The Torah and the Injil are not the original. At the same time, you should, en you should enjoy what is correct and warn against wrong, always bearing in mind the other person's well-being. You know, they're saying now, consider that everyone's in a struggle and show mercy because you don't know what someone's been through or the trials they're suffering. This is Islam. It's about time that people started to think in the sense of unselfishly. Take from them only what is easy for them to give and what they themselves volunteer. Don't demand what is beyond their capacity. Oh my goodness, 
You know, a lot of wives have to pay attention to this because nagging and, um, you know, you know your husband's capacity. If you're married, you know what he's able to earn. So be grateful to Allah for what he gives you and try to be satisfied. Also, don't try to avenge yourself by yourself from the ignorant. Be easy. Give excuses. Don't pry into the reasons for things which are bothersome to you. Overlook and forgive. In the Quran is a very simple, beautiful verse. Bismillah. They ask what they should spend. Qul al af. It's a sense of meaning like, never mind, let it go. Forgiveness, you know, the Arabic words, <laughs> the Arabic words are so rich, but I will simply translate it now in this context as forgiveness. Let it pass. Don't jump on every single mistake that someone has done. And this is Surah Al-Baqarah. If someone ignorant does a mean, stupid thing to you, don't return the same behavior. Allah says in the Quran, when the ignorant address you, tell them, Salam. Salam. Means peace, if you do it right. And this is in Surah Al-Furqan, verse 63. When the Prophet Muhammad was asked, what is the meaning of righteousness? He said, Bir. Good character good behavior. And when he was asked, what is a sin? He replied, that which you feel inside your breast and are afraid others will discover. This is a very uh, huge concept. It has to do with the amount of knowledge that has come to you. And if no knowledge has come to you, Ibn Taymiyyah, the great Sheikh al-Islam, has used the phrase, Hujja bi jahala. You're excused by your ignorance. However, how often can you use that as an excuse? That's why when people say, but what about if they never heard about Islam? What about children? Well, all of this is, is easy to answer. You're not responsible for what you don't even realize. However, you are responsible as an adult with means to go after the truth. And now in 2023, there is no hujjibi jahala. I don't think so. Although, in Islam, we make excuses for deeds done by people under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Um, we'll get to these things. There's so many things, there's so many topics that haven't been covered on YouTube videos by anyone. And they're, of course, <laughs> the most important and at the same time the most difficult because they deal with reality that we're living through. And sometimes um, it's hard for people to tackle it, but I, I'm going to try, inshallah. Yara, please give me the wherewithal to do this. Now I'm 75 and a half. I'm starting to get even more nervous. That half, you know, when you're... <laughs> You were a kid. You used to love to say, no, I'm not only eight, I'm eight and a half. But when you get past 75, that half, mm, okay. The actualization of your faith occurs in right behavior. Nothing carries more weight on a scale on judgment day than good character. You know, you can pray all day and fast all day and read all day. But if you're not a good person and you don't deal with people in a good way, it's not going to make any difference. Because we say, ilm wa amal. First you learn, that's ilm, and then al amal, you do. And how do you determine how you do? Based on the ilm, the knowledge. And what does that mean? Quran and sunnah, hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. <clears throat> when asked what leads a person to the hellfire, 
Oh, you'll like this one. The Prophet Muhammad replied, the tongue and the genitals. Well, be responsible for your tongue and what you say and how you say it and when, to whom. And be very, very careful of illegal sexual behaviors. And of course, that would include homosexuality. <clears throat> he also said the best of you are those who are best to the women, meaning your wife, your mother, your daughter, your sister. So don't judge anything in, in Islam by what you see some quote-unquote Muslims doing. They're not following the sunnah. You won't find people who follow the sunnah being cruel to the women they're responsible for. And do I say responsible for? Yes, meaning whatever those women need, you have to help them. Oh, now we have a new generation of Muslim, quote unquote, men saying, well, you're going to go to work and pay half. Mm. Not the best of the men. A believer can attain by his good character alone the rank of those who continually fast and pray. The Prophet Muhammad said that the closest to him in rank on Judgment Day will be those with the best character. The worst are those who are long-winded, silver-tongued show-offs who forget the mention of Allah as they pompously try to gain mastery over others through their eloquence. You know the expression, the silver-tongued devil? <sighs> Unfortunately, I can think of a couple of... Um, content creators, they're called, I don't know. They're very, very um, popular now. They've got a huge following because they're so eloquent and educated. But Prophet Muhammad didn't like that. In the Quran, Allah says to speak clear, straight words. Qawlun sadidun. After which there is no doubt what is meant. Four main components of a good Islamic character are number one, patience, number two, forbearance, number three, courage, and number four, fairness. Patience includes holding one's temper, to be mild-mannered and friendly and not fickle or hasty. Forbearance is not to hurt anyone with deeds or words. Don't be miserly or gossip or slander. Courage is to have high principles and apply them. It takes courage to hold back yourself from exploding. Prophet Muhammad said the strong one is not the wrestler who can take you to the ground, but the one who holds back his temper. Fairness is to be moderate in everything to everyone. Be liberal and generous without showing off as a spendthrift does. Be neither cowardly nor reckless. Don't debase yourself, but at the same time, don't leap up in anger in your own defense. All other desirable traits stem from these four. Let's repeat them. Patience, forbearance, courage, and fairness. Four general traits are also found to be the reasons for a bad character, and they are ignorance, oppression, lust, and anger. Hmm. The ignorant person sees good as bad and vice versa. He feels what is complete is deficient, and what is deficient is just right. Oppression means to put someone or something in the wrong position. He's not content with what should be and tries to change the nature of things. He's miserly when he should spend, and he spends when he shouldn't. He's rigid when he should be flexible, and flexible when he should be firm. He's humble when he should be showing his strength, and vain when he should be humble. This person is really mixed up because he doesn't follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. And lastly, 
Lust drives one to ostentatiousness and covetous, covetousness. His avarice knows no bounds. He must feed his lustful ego at anyone's expense. This trait leads to all forms of lowly behavior. Anger leads to vanity, envy, and malice. Enmity and insolence also go hand in hand. These faults arise through misunderstanding of the concepts of weakness and strength. For instance, if you leave the quality of being merciful in fear that you will be seen as weak, you will turn either cruel and hard-hearted or faint-hearted and aloof from the concerns of others. When you are not moderately humble as you should be, you turn to be vain and proud or, rec or, <clears throat> or reticent and self-abasing. In summary, you should know yourself and your capabilities because you are necessarily constrained by your capacity, which varies from one to another. This is the wisdom of Allah's creation. In this, you benefit in three important ways. People feel safe with you. They love you. And they succeed through you. Always be lenient in your demands. It's beautiful, isn't it? You know, I actually translated the character segment from Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawzi, uh, Medadaj al-Salikin, one of my favorite books. And the fact that I translated it and still stumble over it, I will chalk that up to uh, last half hour of fasting. And uh, I apologize if um, my misspeak uh, confused you in any way. Perhaps you can listen to it again. Actually, this is the longest one, 17 minutes and 23 seconds. So I'm going to say now, assalamu alaikum, wonderful Ramadan, uh, a delicious iftar, which is what I'm thinking about right now. And uh, wish we could all be together and have it as one. But we are in our hearts, inshallah. Believers, whether we call ourselves Muslims or not, those who don't call themselves Muslims, I hope you're on the path, and I hope that I've helped you. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.